So any good Raspberry Pi setup starts with a Raspberry Pi. I know this doesn't come as a shock to you, but this is what we do. I want to break it down to its basic parts. There will be links in the description below for the websites and the uh, Amazon store to get the Raspberry Pi. This is the one that I got. You can see that I last purchased this November 14th, 2020. So I ain't lying to you. Um, what we got here is the Canna Kit Raspberry Pi 4 gig extreme kit, 128 gig edition. I think I'm gonna steal that 128 gig card for something else. This is going to be a media center device. I'm gonna plug this thing right into my television and I'm gonna use it to stream Amazon Prime videos and I'm gonna use it to stream Netflix movies. And of course, I'm gonna use it to do some YouTube stuff because um, I like to watch YouTube more than the other two things. But uh, here we are. The reason why I like this kit and this honey thing is covering up, but there are two, um, there are two different video out cables that come with it. So you already have what you need to get from the two HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi out to the two HDMI devices that you want to display on. You get your 128 gig SD card. Like I said, I might swap that out. You get a USB device that lets you read and write to your SD cards on your other computer and also on the Raspberry Pi later on once it's all set up. You get the Raspberry Pi itself. You get a couple of heat sinks. You get a fan. You get one of these cool on off switches for your Raspberry Pi. And you also get a um, power supply and a case. So this is like everything that you need in a Raspberry Pi to get yourself set up and ready to roll. Um, and it's $150 right now. You can't beat this deal, this is fantastic. The next thing that you're gonna need, let me get set up for that, I'll show you the next thing that you're gonna need. And then that tab magically appears in my browser. Weird how that works out. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need is Twister OS. Twister OS took all of the hard, nasty mess stuff out. Let's see if I can get a better, I gotta do it over here. Better view. There we go, just a little bit of a better view. What is Twister OS? The main goal of Twister OS is to provide a true desktop computing experience for single board computers right out of the box. Twister OS includes themes, applications, tools, and optimizations to allow you to get the most out of your SBC. And that is absolutely true. This thing looks fantastic. It's, it's extremely usable, especially on smaller screens like TV screens. Um, eight different user interface themes. So you have a Linux theme, a Windows theme, a Mac theme. Um, what else do we have here? Box86, a built-in emulator for running x86 programs. Wine for running Windows emulation. Uh, Wine is not Windows, folks. W-I-N-E, Wine is not Windows. Commander Pi, an application that provides an easy way to perform advanced configuration tasks like overclocking on your SBC. And that's actually kind of funny because Commander Pi is where I started this journey, which pointed me to Twister OS, which pointed me back to the fact that Twister does uh, DRM inclusion for Chrome browser, which means that we can do a 2021 Netflix on Pi video. Um, if you haven't followed the channel for a while, I have a 2020 and I have a 2019 and they're getting less and less painful. This being the least painful so far. I love it. What else do we have? Chromium Media Edition. I kind of just mentioned that. My Android Screen Copy enables you to mirror your Android screen. Pi Kiss and Pi Apps, two software stores to download more app specifically designed for the Pi. Lutris is a gaming platform. It looks like it's also got Steam, um, RetroPie, LibreOffice, and a whole bunch of other Raspberry Pi type applications. So what we need to do is we need to go into downloads and get this thing downloaded. It is uh, recommended for Raspberry Pi 4. There are ways to get it to work with the Raspberry Pi 3, but uh, Raspberry Pi 4 is better and we all know that it's better. Um, and also RK3399, which is like the Rock Pi stuff. And then you can download it for desktops and laptops to get the user interface type stuff. So this is pretty slick. I'm gonna hit download for Raspberry Pi. It's gonna take me to a download for either a straight XZ compressed image file or a torrent file. And then it's gonna tell me that the default password is Raspberry. And then you can also get a Pi imager. We like to use Etcher, so I'm gonna show you Etcher here in a bit but I uh, wanted to get you guys started off with um, where to go to download it and why you'd even want this thing in the first place. Um, it looks like it is also, like there's also some open source type stuff here. So if you wanna help contribute back to the project, go for it. 
So again, links for Twister OS in the description, links for, there it is over there, links for the um, Amazon Raspberry Pi kit in the description. And next thing we're gonna do is get this thing imaged onto an SD card. So I am running on Mac OS here. I have the files downloaded and I wanna work with them. So the very first thing that I need to do is get a program like Etcher. Etcher's my go-to program. I'm gonna do flash from where I stored everything. And then there's this download file, twisteros.img.xz uh, file. So I'm gonna pick that. And I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna select the target. And I have my 128 gig SD card that came with the Canna kit, Raspberry Pi kit. Pick that, I'm gonna say select all. And then I'm gonna say flash. You are about to erase an unusually large drive. Yes, I'm sure. Because I'm sure. Something went wrong. If it's a compressed image, please check that the archive is not corrupted. The writer process ended unexpectedly. So, it's because for some reason, Etcher can't understand the .xz file. So what I want to do is come over here and take a look at this. This .xz file is 3.2 gigs in size. It's huge and it's compressed. Uh, you have to uncompress it. So on Mac OS, you uncompress it with unxz space twisteros.xz, you know, the whole file name. And it takes like an hour and change to, to extract this. And this is not a uh, slow machine. It's not a fast machine, but it's not a slow machine. What are we looking at? Uh, i7 7th gen, 2.9 gigahertz. Um, pretty fast machine. So unxz space and then the file with the .xz extension. And when you're done, you will have a 10 gig extracted image file. It's ginormous. All right, let's get back over to Etcher. Let's flash from file. Let's pick that one. Let's pick the target of the 128 gig drive. Let's hit the flash button. Oh no, it's a large drive. Fine, yes, I'm sure. That's gonna take some time. So when it's done, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. That actually took a lot less time to write out the flash image to the SD card than it did for me to decompress it. Um, so not bad at all. Next thing we're gonna do is get this thing all plugged in to our Raspberry Pi and our video capture setup and do a first boot. That's gonna be a whole big mess of wires on my desk. Hang on. All right, this is not my normal recording setup. I got video capture going, HDMI in, HDMI out to a screen over here. So I'm gonna be looking in this direction and it's not even my normal recording computer, but we're gonna make this happen for you folks. This is this this is the Twister OS setup and this is the first boot on that 128 gig SD card. And basically it comes up with a welcome to, I'm gonna click next to get started and then Raspberry Pi configuration, let's launch that. And I wanna boot. This is the typical Raspberry Pi configuration you're used to. I'm gonna go right through this. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a good host name for what I'm doing here. Boot to the desktop, auto login as user Pi, don't wait. Enable the splash screen, that's all good. Overscan, overscan if your TV has a black border around the outside of it, try toggling this overscan setting and see what you can get with that. Um, it's a, it's a television thing, it's not really a computer thing, so if you plug a Raspberry Pi into a computer monitor, it'll probably be full edge of the screen, but if you plug it into a TV, you might have a black border around the outside. So toggle this on and off. I actually have a TV where I have the black border with overscan off, and with overscan on, the screen is beyond the edge of the borders. It is what it is, I'd rather have it a little bit beyond the edge of the borders for TV viewing. I don't do a whole lot of computer work on my TV. So, it's a compromise, but uh, better than having a full-fledged computer sitting under my television. All right, uh, composite video I don't need, pixel doubling I don't need, screen blanking is fine. Interfaces, I wanna turn SSH on, I wanna turn VNC on, all the rest of this stuff I can leave to disable. Um, performance, GPU memory. So the previous version of this, I was not able to boost the GPU memory up this high. Uh, it would start to crash. 128 megs of, 128 megs? Yeah, 128 megs of GPU memory should be fine. Um, if not, you can tweak it. And if your machine doesn't reboot properly, get back to this part, this part, this setting, 
and lower it down or raise it up or, or change it in some way. That was what was causing me some trouble before. The fan, uh, the can of kit comes with a fan for the Raspberry Pi. It defaults to on. I'm going to play with that a little bit and see if I can get it to be temperature sensitive and only come on when it's needed. Because uh, that's what these settings look like. I probably just have it plugged into the the always on five volts or whatever to get the fan running and localization this was interesting normally when you get a raspberry pi it defaults to uk localization but this one defaults to us which is good because i'm in the us set my time zone it picked chicago i don't know how it got that because i'm not even connected to the internet yet keyboard that's all good so maybe the developer is in chicago set wi-fi country it's not set uh, let's see if we can get away with not setting that I'm going to click OK on that. And I'm going to click Next there. Update my system. I can't really update the system until I get online, but you can see that VNC started up here above me. And I'm going to get onto my network. And once that's done, I'm going to click that Update button. All right, that's done. I'm going to click Update. And the update happens so fast that uh, it doesn't really need an update. So it doesn't look like it's done anything, but if you saw that little terminal window pop up for a split second, that was it trying to update itself. No need to worry about that. Choose your theme. This is where uh, Twister OS gets really interesting. For me, the default Raspberry Pi uh, Pixel desktop is nice if you've got a big screen, but not so good if um, you are working on a limited desktop space. So I don't know why that just went dark. That's a pain in the butt. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, and then it came back all by itself. Want a different look? This will change your current theme. And so we've got the Twister OS theme, which is current. This is a Windows 95-like. This is Windows XP-like. This is called Nighthawk. That looks pretty neat. Uh, Raspbian X looks pretty neat. iRaspbian is like a Mac OS. iRaspbian Dark is like a dark Mac OS. And then Raspbian 7 looks like a... Um, Windows 7 image and those are the ones that come out of the box I am going to pick okay so Nighthawk is dark Raspbian X is light uh, I'm gonna pick Nighthawk it's changing it's twisting the theme system will now restart press enter to continue so let's restart it Ah, Windows 10. We're going to change that. Choose my theme. I'm not a Windows 10 fan. All right, reboot again. All right, that's better than Windows 10. Go back through here, get started. We're all done with all of that. So it keeps popping up until you're done having it pop up. Um, so right off the bat, some of the interesting things that are going on here is this on-demand icon up here at the top will show you your current uh, CPU clock for your different cores. And it will actually change automatically or you can set it. That's neat. Uh, we've got Bluetooth, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got VNC that I turned on. Um, oh, okay. I've got a wireless mouse plugged in, so it's telling me that my, my battery on my wireless mouse is pretty low. Audio. Search. Oh, it's got a little spotlight thing in here. One plus one equals two. I love it. This is going to be great. What else do we have? Workspace one. And does it do... Does it do that? No, it doesn't do that. All right. Uh, all right, so the theme twister is the first icon. I think that's the thing that we've already seen. Yep, that's the thing that we've already seen. Nothing to change there. Commander Pi is what got me started down this journey. And this is a pretty cool little tool that will let you check out your CPU details. ARM v7, uh, little NDN, CPU cores is four. Online CPU list 0 through 3, they're all good. Threads per core 1, cores per socket 4, sockets 1, vendor ARM, Cortex A72, 
and 270 Bogomips. Okay, bootloader. What do we got with bootloader? Okay, so this looks like it is your um, config. Only for advanced users. All right, so you can change a couple of things on here. Neat. Close that network settings. All right, so the ethernet card is not set up and the Wi-Fi is set up and I can set my country code, that's fine. Overclock panel, overclocking is only for advanced users. Yeah, so if you overclock this thing, you could actually melt your CPU. So take appropriate cooling measures and do some reading up before you do that. CPU speed, GPU speed, and a little bit extra voltage. Recommended values, maximum values. So I could actually overclock this. I don't have any need to overclock it, but it's neat that it's all built in. Uh, switch kernel 3264. Still experimental. So you can switch the kernel back and forth. Force turbo. And I don't need to force it. There we go. So Commander Pi is a pretty cool little tool. Lots of little features in there. Hard disk would let me browse the SD card file system. And that's what that looks like. Nothing special, nothing new there. Chromium Media Edition. This is where it gets pretty interesting. This is an older version of Chromium that has been patched with the tools that allow you to use uh, the DRM libraries so that you can watch Netflix or you can watch Amazon Prime videos. Let me get in here and take a look at a uh, Netflix video. And that's going to require me to log in and all that fancy stuff. It defaults to the Twister OS website. That's awesome. Netflix.com. sign in and this is just the regular Netflix website so let me blank out for a second and get my user ID and password in I don't want you all sneaking into my account and watching what I'm watching okay we're back and I have gone up to the search box and I have searched for test and there is a test patterns multi-purpose chart nice season one episode two I might have watched this once or twice before Right. There you go. Netflix is working just fine. All right, let's log out of this and let's try Amazon Prime. Okay, so this is Amazon Prime. I'm all the way on the other side of the login gateway. This is Star Trek Beyond. We're going to play a little bit of this. Uh, just enough to show that it's working and hopefully not so much that we get any type of uh, issues. And there you have it. Twister OS, Raspberry Pi, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix Video. Let's see if YouTube works. I like that there's Spotlight in there. I like that it's got themes that make better use of the available desktop space and a little less uh, bright on your eyeballs. So we've got our old Netflix and Pi video, and we've got our new Netflix and Pi video. So search results work, and there's some competition here. I don't know about that. Um, the preview theme worked. Perfect. Let's see if playback works. They can't yell at me for playing my own video. Ah, that's right. For some reason, YouTube age-restricted this video and won't tell me why. It would be very easy to comply with the rules. If you tell me what the rules are, YouTube... Skip the trial. No thanks. Welcome back.
Welcome back, friends. Thanks there for being here. There we go. We're playing a YouTube In video. video. I picked up a Raspberry Pi 4 base. And that's all you need. It just gets easier and easier, and I like it. Thanks for being awesome.